Now that we've gotten familiar with how to find and calculate derivatives, we're ready to take that to the next level and look at calculating higher ordered derivatives. If a derivative is a measure of how fast something is changing, a higher order derivative is a measure of how fast the change is changing. We're looking at changing change. The notation that's going to be used here for a derivative of a derivative. Let's first start with, we've done first order derivatives before. That was f prime of x, or maybe d dx, or maybe dy dx for the notation of a first order derivative. If I want to take a second derivative, what we'll do in the apostrophe or prime notation is we'll write f prime prime of x to represent the second derivative. On the d dx, we'll square the d and we'll square the dx. And so d squared over dx squared is going to represent the second derivative. And with the y in there, that y just is tacked on to the side. Now, if I want a third derivative, that's just going to extend the idea and do three primes or d cubed over dx cubed or d cubed y over dx cubed, meaning the third derivative. And then for the fourth derivative, we would see f. And instead of doing four primes, because that's starting to get annoying, we'll write a little superpower of 4. So f4x means the fourth derivative of x. But the other notation just kind of continues with that pattern. And so that's how we're going to represent these higher order derivatives. And we could keep going on with fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on. What these higher order derivatives are doing, though, is they really are measuring how fast the change is changing. For example, you might have heard something like increasing at a slower rate. In other words, the numbers might be increasing from 1 to 11 to 16 to 18.5. These numbers are increasing, but the rate that they're increasing is slowing down. First, it increased by 10, then by 5, then by 2 and a half. Because they're increasing at a slower rate, we're talking about the second derivative, how fast the change, the increase, is changing. We could say something like decreasing at a faster rate. We might start at 10, and then the next number is 9, and then the next number is 6, and then the next number is 2. And we see these numbers are decreasing, but the rate they're decreasing at is increasing. So from 10 to 9, it only decreased 1. From 9 to 6, it decreased 3. Then it decreased 4. It's decreasing at a faster rate. So we're talking about how fast the change, the increase or decrease, is changing. Is it changing at a faster rate or a slower rate? That's the idea of a higher ordered derivative. So let's do some examples. Let's say f of x is equal to 5x to the 7th minus 3x to the 4th plus 2x minus 7. And we want to find the third derivative. We want to know how much change is in the change of the change, third derivative. Well, to do that, we just have to calculate the derivatives one at a time. We know how to calculate the first derivative. Move the 7 out front, and we get 35x to the 6th minus. Move the 4 out front, and we get 12x cubed plus the derivative of 2x is 2. That's the first derivative. Now to find the second derivative, we're just going to take the derivative of the derivative. So 35x to the 6th, move the 6 out front, and we get 210x to the 5th minus, move the 3 out front, and we get 36x squared. And the derivative of 2 is 0. 
For the third derivative then, which is what we're looking for, we move the 5 out front and we get 1050 x to the fourth minus 72 x to the first. And that is our third derivative. Let's do another one. Let's say f of x equals e to the 2x times x squared plus 5. And we want to find not just the second derivative, but we want to plug the number 0 into the second derivative. Well, to find the first derivative, we have a product rule. The derivative of e to the 2x is e to the 2x times 2, using the chain rule, times the seconds part, plus the derivative of the second part is 2x times the first part, which is e to the 2x. Now we need to find the second derivative by taking the derivative of this. Notice we've got two product rules that we're going to have to do. The derivative of 2, e to the 2x, is e to the 2x times 2, which is going to give us 4. Derivative of the first times the second, plus the derivative of the second, which is 2x, times the first, which is 2 e to the 2x. 2 times 2 is going to give me 4. Plus the 2x e to the 2x is also a product rule. The derivative of the first is 2 times the second e to the 2x plus the derivative of the second, which is 2 e to the 2x times the first, which is 2x. 2 times 2 is 4. Now that we have the second derivative, we're ready to actually calculate what the second derivative is at 0. Plugging 0 in, we get 4 e to the 2 times 0 times 0 squared plus 5 plus 4 times 0 e to the 2 times 0 plus 2 e to the 2 times 0 plus 2 times 0 e to the 2 times 0. And what's nice is those two terms that we were multiplying by 0 on are going to go to 0. And so we get 4 times e to the 0 is 1 times 5 plus 2 times e to the 0 is 1. And 4 times 5 is 20 plus 2 is 22. In our next video, we're going to keep working with higher order derivatives, but specifically looking at an example of how they're used in the real world.